All right, so to create a grenade launcher, the first thing we want to do is make the inputs, which I've already done this. It's real simple. You just right click right here, go to input, and you create a new input action right here. Now I called mine input action shoot. And then you right click again, go to input, make a mapping context. And I called this weapons because in the future I'm going to do videos on more weapons and have like a whole weapon system. So if I open up the shoot, it's just a bull and I don't have any triggers or modifiers in here. So you can basically just leave this as is. And then inside IMC weapons, I have left mouse button. And for the trigger, I have pressed right here. So now with this out of the way, we can close out of this and head to back over here to the content. I have a imports folder because this series is going to be using the military weapon asset pack, which if you are unfamiliar, it just has a bunch of guns and weapons in it. And one key note inside the asset pack, if you're using Unreal Engine 5, the effects over here, you may want to convert these to the Niagara systems right here. Which to do this, I think there's a plugin you may have to enable. So if I go edit plugins, yeah, right here, cascade to Niagara converter right here. You just enable this plugin. And then once it's enabled, then you just simply right click your asset or your particle system. And then you convert it to a Niagara system. And you may get errors in some of these, which I think a couple of them I did, but they're fairly simple to resolve. So now we can head over to the content browser, and I have a tutorial folder right here just to keep everything separated. And we can start creating the grenade launcher. Okay, right, so I'm going to right click and create a new folder. I'm just going to call this weapon components or weapon component i'm going to go into here and then i'm going to right click again make a blueprint class and search for a skeletal mesh component right here select i'm going to call this bp base weapon and inside of here, I'm going to open this up. Once you have it open, all this is going to do is just set up our mapping context because all the weapons use the same mapping context. So I'm just going to right click and do get player controller. This. And then cast to player. Or well, you don't have to cast because it's already getting the player controller. So I'm just going to do get enhanced input local player subsystem right here and then off of this you want to check is valid chances are it'll always be valid but it's always good to check just in case and then off of this you just do add mapping context and of course for the mapping context you want to make this imc weapons and we can compile and save this and we are completely done in the base weapon so we can go ahead and close out of this and then we can right click it and create child blueprint and do BP grenade launcher. All right, so open this up. Instead of here, this is where we're going to use the input action shoot. So input action underscore shoot. That's just what I called the left click if you're unsure. All right, so now the first thing we want to do is real quickly just compile and save this. I know this is kind of jumping around a little bit, but this needs to be done in order to have this flow a little bit better. So I'm going to go out of the weapon components folder, and I'm going to right click and make a new folder called projectiles. And then inside of this, I'm going to right click and create a blueprint class actor. I'm just going to call this BP grenade projectile. And the reason why I'm not parenting this is because I had a few issues with the uh, projectile movement component. And a lot of your weapons are going to be hit scan anyways. It's only, you only have like your grenades and your rockets that really aren't hit scan. So this is 
alright to not have a base projectile, per se. But now that we have this created, we can now head back to our weapon component, grenade launcher. The reason I created that was because we're going to be spawning that actor in here. So I want to have that actor like actually existing, if that makes sense. So it's a little bit of a sidetrack, but not much. It'll make sense why I did that in just a moment. But anyways, first we first things first is a grenade launcher. Typically, there's a delay between the shots, so we're gonna have to drag off of the trigger and do a do once, and then come down here, right click, and search for add custom event. And I'm gonna call this reset shot. And then I'm gonna plug this into the reset right there. And then later on, after we spawn the projectile and everything, we're going to call this function. And it will let us shoot again. So next, for the sound and everything, you don't have to worry about not having sounds. This asset pack comes with sounds and everything for you. But I'm going to right-click and do get player character. And then drag off of this. And my character is called BP underscore Steven. You may be using third-person character. Just whatever you're using, you want to cast to it. Or whatever you're using in your game mode, essentially. But then off of as BP Steven, I'm going to drag over this and do get actor location. Because this is going to be the location we play the sound at. And then I'm going to drag over this and do play sound at location. And as you could guess, the location is our actor. And the sound is grenade. Grenade launcher A underscore fire Q right here. We're going to play this sound cue. And so next is the part where we're going to use the, or spawn the projectile. So off of your sound, do a spawn actor from class. And the class is going to be BP underscore grenade projectile that we created. I have two of them because I've already done this. Just select the one that pops up for you. I'm not sure which one of these is the current one, but I don't think it matters. Because I'm going to show you how to do it anyways. So I'm just going to select one of them. And then off of our cast over here. We're going to do get follow camera. Right here. And you want to break apart the spawn transform. In the spawn actor right there. And off of your follow camera. You want to do get world rotation. And then for the spawn transform location. You want to right click and do get socket location like this and we will create the socket in just a second but for now just plug this in into transform location and the socket name is you can name it wherever you want but mine's going to be projectile spawn and then we can compile save and go set up the socket real quick all right so at the military weapon silver pack open this up weapons and then you find the grenade launcher skeleton right here once you have it open i have my socket already here but basically on the grip bone you just right click add socket and then drag it up and out bring it out like a decent amount so that the grenade doesn't actually interfere with the weapon itself mine is located about this far out and again, I called it projectile spawn. It's very important that you know what you named it right here. Or then you'll have problems with trying to spawn it. So once you get this all situated, kind of like a decent amount out, we can completely close this. And then head back to our content, blueprints, and then weapon components, grenade launcher. And so now it'll spawn at the projectile spawn we just created. And so now we need to, after we spawn the projectile, we want to spawn the, the muzzle flash. So off of our spawn actor, we want to spawn system at location. And the, and the socket is already created for you for this. So again, right click and do get socket location. And the predefined socket is called muzzle flash and then you could drag off of your cast over here or just right click and do get player character 
and get the character and then get actor rotation like so and then spawn system at location our socket is the location and our actor rotation is the rotation and for the system this is where we're going to use the niagara particle effects we converted so search for p underscore grenade muzzle flash right here and if there's a problem with like the particle particle system looping there's settings inside the particle system that you can disable the looping for it inside of or i guess i could go ahead and just show you while i'm at it so content imports military weapon effects niagara grenade muzzle flash right here open that up and right here on the emitter state loop behavior set this to once emitter state right here once emitter state right here once and then make sure auto deactivate is checked over here on the whole system parameters and as well make sure the loop behavior over here is set to once as well and so after we spawn the projectile or we spawn the particle system now is when we want to make the delay effect for shooting another grenade so simply just add a delay and this could be as long as you want but i find maybe like one second or two seconds to be good and then after it's completed you just want to call reset shot right here and compile and save and with that our grenade launcher is fully completed except in the class settings or the class defaults make sure you set your skeletal mesh over here to sk underscore or just search for grenade launcher a and set your skeletal mesh to that and animations and everything this will be in part two so i just want to get the base setup of the grenade launcher right now then we can compile and save and now we can close out of this like i said and then head back to imports or no content blueprints tutorial and then inside the projectiles bp grenade projectile open this up all right so inside of here we can delete the begin overlap and the tick what we want to do is go to add right here and add a sphere collision and then drag this onto the root right there make it the new root and then add a niagara particle system component right here i'm just going to call this smoke rail and for the particle system you want to click the particle system and search for p underscore grenade trail one right here and then we simply want to also add a projectile movement component and the projectile movement component is completely customizable to you so you don't have to use my settings whatsoever but i simply just set this to 3000 and this right here to 3000 as well and that's all i change and so now we want to come over here to our variables and create a new variable and call this can explode because typically grenade launchers like if it doesn't go far enough then it won't explode So we're just going to do can explode and then drag off of delay and this is customizable as well. But on your begin play have a delay and set this to 0.5 is what I have mine set to. And then you drag your can explode in and you set it to true. Alright so now we want to make the impact. So right click and search for event hit. And this is where we're going to grab our can explode right here. Get can explode. Explode. Hold down B. Left click for a branch. Plug this into there. Connect that up. And if it's false, we're just going to drag off and do destroy actor. Like that. But if it's true, then what we're going to do is drag off of the hit location. Or actually just drag off of true real quick and do play sound at location and drag our hit location in for the location and then the sound is going to be explosion cute 
right here drop this down and then for the attenuation settings do explosion attenuation inside my attenuation i set its range like there's a range setting in there i up the range setting so as you'll see like in your project you may not be able to hear your explosion as far away as i can hear mine so that's the reason why it's it's real simple it's literally like a setting in there called like range or something like that now we drag off of this and we have to do our emitter so we want to spawn emitter at location and this is going to be our explosion whenever it hits the ground so we're going to have hit location for the location and make sure it's auto destroy and auto activate is enabled and so now after it hits we want to drag in our sphere and we want to destroy component because we want to make sure this thing doesn't generate any more hits anywhere and s and then right here is where you would do your apply radial damage with fall off you would do that right here but i'm not gonna have damage on mine just yet so i'm just gonna unplug that but this is where it would go and then after this i'm gonna do a delay and i find a delay about like one second to be good enough this delay is just to give it enough time for the for the emitter right here to play. You could get the time of it, but I find just doing one second works good enough. And then after the delay, we just simply destroy actor. And so now we can compile and save this. And then in this part, I'm not going to worry about picking up the weapon or anything, so simply go to your character i'm mine's a meta human steven bp steven go to your character and then you simply add component and you search for bp grenade launcher and again i have two but once it's added right here then it should be in your viewport right here and then you could drag it out to the side just for testing and again animations and everything will be in part two and we can compile and save and if we minimize this and we hit play as you can see we can run around and then if i shoot it shoots the grenade launcher up or it shoots the grenade up and then it explodes down there shoot again and if i get close to this wall right here and i shoot directly into it as you can see it doesn't explode And so yeah, you can adjust how fast you can shoot. You could spam the grenades if you want to. It's really up to you. But yeah, that's how you make a simple grenade launcher. This series is going to be how to make like a full-on weapon system. So I'm going to add pickups and animations and everything. But just for part one, I just want like a weapon up and running. If you enjoyed, leave a like. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.